Good afternoon all. Today we have Ms. Vinita V, Assistant Professor in Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering from Federal Institute of Science and Technology. She did her M.Tech from Model Engineering College, Trikakara in VLSI and Embedded Systems and her graduation from VLBG uh, CET Coimbatore. Uh, she, and she had started her career in teaching from 2004. Ma'am, now we can start the session. Okay, thank you. I will just share the slides. Good afternoon, everyone. Here we are for the second session of VLSI module two, module four. And this is a part two of this module, which is the last part. Now, today we are going to deal with transmission gates. Uh, so this is just an overview of what we are going to see today. Initially, we'll try to define what transmission gate is. How can we analyze the working of a transmission gate? And next, what we'll see is how to implement logic functions using transmission gates, just like how we have seen for past transistors. And after that, we'll just see a small DC analysis where in which we are trying to find out the equivalent resistance of a transmission gate. Now, why that is used and where that is used, we'll see once we finish off initial two portions. Okay, so we can start. Uh, so transmission gate basically forms the last part of module 4. Now earlier in the first session we have seen uh, working of a pass transistor, we have seen working of a complementary pass transistor logic. So uh, why we go for transmission gates or what are basically transmission gates? So we'll start from pass transistors. We have seen that either an NMOS or a PMOS can act as a pass transistor and it can be used to implement logic functions. So the major characteristics or as such the disadvantage of using an NMOS is that NMOS can give only a good zero and PMOS can give only a good one. So when, when, it, uh, when it comes to giving a good one, NMOS cannot give a good one and PMOS cannot give a good zero. So that was a major disadvantage we have seen for fast transistors. So transmission gate actually tries to overcome this disadvantage of fast transistors. So transmission gate also can be used to implement logic function just like how we have seen for fast transistors. In addition to that, that whatever disadvantage is there in the fast transistors is actually not there in your transmission gate. So basically, Transmission gate is nothing but a switching element. Just like past transistors, we have seen past transistors is either an NMOS or PMOS. You can use it as a switch, right? The transmission gate is also a switching element. So there, what you have is NMOS and PMOS together and they are connected in parallel. So transmission gate is a switching element which uses both NMOS and PMOS connected in parallel. So since you are having both NMOS and PMOS in a single circuit, it combines the advantage of both. So thereby transmission gates can, we can say transmission gate can easily path both zero and one very well. So thereby it can be used as building blocks for logic circuitry. So that is just a glance of what your transmission gate is. So the basic idea is, Transmission gate is nothing but a switching element and it has both NMOS and PMOS connected in parallel and such circuits are used to implement logic circuits. <clears throat> so as I told you here I am having a NMOS and to this NMOS we also have a PMOS connected in parallel. So this is just a transmission gate. Okay. So uh, what happens is on the left hand side what you have is an in input. That is, I've connected the terminals or the inputs of both NMOS and PMOS. I've shorted together and taken as input. And the output of N PMOS and NMOS are shorted together and taken as output. Or more clearly, I've just uh, tilted to, uh, I've just rotated the diagram. Uh, this is one way of looking into it. So you have a NMOS here, you have a PMOS here. So remember, wherever you are having a bubble, that indicates that is a PMOS, that is indication or symbol of a PMOS. So here you are having an NMOS, here you are having a PMOS. This is my input and this is my output. Now one thing to note here is, if you have to uh, note the gate signal. If I am providing A as a gate signal for the 
for one of the gate, either N MOS or P MOS. So the other one, the other one should be the complement of it. So if it is A here, the other one is A bar. Or suppose if it is A bar here, the other one is A. So that is basically how your transmission gate is. So the gate signals are basically complement of one another. That's how it should be. And then you are having input and then you are having the output. So this is basically how when I said NMOS and PMOS are connected in parallel, this is how it is connected in parallel. So in a more clearly by defining or by looking onto how the source and drain are connected, this is how your transmission gate looks like. That is for an NMOS, the drain and the PMOS source are shorted together and given as input. Same way, the NMOS source and PMOS drain are shorted together and taken as output. That is more clear definition or that is more clear idea about your transmission gate. So this is how or this is, the, this is your basic transmission gate. Now we'll just see normally in textbooks how or what symbol do we use to represent your transmission gate. So this is a symbol of transmission gate. One minute. This is a symbol of transmission gate. So where you put a bubble, that is normally the transistor PMOS. Where you don't have a bubble, that is your NMOS. So this terminal basically indicates the gate terminal of PMOS. And the opposite side is a gate terminal of NMOS. On to the left hand side, what you have is your input and the right hand side, what you have is your output. So this is the general symbol, that is a symbol of transmission gate. This is a basic symbol of transmission gate. Now, we will come back to this diagram. This you can say the circuit diagram. So, we will just see how your transmission gate works. Okay. So, here in this case, what I have done is for an NMOS, I have connected A as your gate signal. For a PMOS, I have connected A bar as your gate signal. Now, imagine the condition where A equal to 1. If A is 1, A bar is 0. So, when A is 1, 1 is given to the NMOS gate and 0 is given to the PMOS gate. So that means both of the transistors are on, if you remember. So both of the transistors in this case is on. So what will happen is, whatever input you are giving, since both the transistors are on, it gives a low resistance part to the output. So whatever input you are giving is transferred right away to the, is transferred right away to the output. Okay, so that is the basic working of a transmission gate. Now imagine the other case where your A is 0. When A is 0, gate value or gate terminal is 0 potential and a gate of PMOS is at A bar. It is A bar, so this is 1 here. So you are having a 0 to gate it to the NMOS and 1 to gate of the PMOS. So what happens is both the transistors are off. In that case, you can say the output is actually disconnected from the input. You cannot say what the output is or normally you call that as a high impedance state. So that is the basic working of a transmission gate. Now initially itself I told you, transmission gate since it has both PMOS and NMOS together, it can effectively give 1 and 0. It's not like you have an NMOS alone or a PMOS alone. So how does that happen? Imagine the case where Gate, gate are active. Both the gates are active. So that is a condition where your A equal to 1 and A bar equal to 0. So this NMOS is on, PMOS is also on. Okay, so you are giving an input. The input can be either 0 or 1. Imagine you are giving the input as 0. So this is just a switch. So it just transmits, trans, trans, uh, it just transmits that 0 as it towards the output. So what happens is when you give a 0, this PMOS is also on, NMOS is also on. Am I right? Now we know like in past transistor section we have seen that a PMOS cannot pass a full zero because by the time the voltage come back to a VTH, this PMOS will be off. But NMOS, when you give a zero here, this transistor is always on. So what happens is no matter what the input voltage is, this NMOS will give a low resistance path to the output. So this entire zero is transmitted to the output. But whereas as the voltage decreases to VTH, this PMOS will be off. So PMOS is off means this will give a high resistance path so that entire zero cannot be transmitted through the 
CMOS. So that is a basic idea I say transmission gate can give a good zero and also same way transmission gate can also give a good one. How we look into that. So for a good one say input is again one. So gate both the gate are active that means this NMOS is on PMOS is on. So if we give a logic one here uh, if you look into the NMOS and the PMOS session we, we have seen that in past transistors this NMOS for it will not give a proper one because once uh, the output reaches a value of VDD minus VTH this NMOS is off. So NMOS is off means it will give a high resistance but PMOS is off always on so thereby it will give a low, low resistance path between the input and the output so the entire one can appear at the output so that is the reason why whether the input is one or zero this transmission gate can effectively or faithfully give the entire output okay as one or zero so the major issue regarding pass transistors uh, is solved out here so that is a basic working of a transmission gate. So we have just drawn the transmitted transmission gate truth table. This is a symbol of the transmission gate. Now one thing you always have to remember is wherever you are having a bubble, that is an indication of PMOS gate. Okay. So don't confuse this and this with the bubble. These are the nodes. So here is where your P bubble is. So that means this is a gate of your PMOS. And opposite side obviously that will be the gate of your NMOS. So here in the circuit my input is A and my output is B and the gate signal I have named it as control. So for the NMOS it is control and for the PMOS it is control bar. Right. So what happens is like we have analyzed the circuit earlier when control is 1 then your NMOS is on if control is 1 means control bar is 0 then your PMOS is also on. So your uh, input is transmitted on to the output only when control bit is 1. So depending upon that you are having a truth table here. So let's look into the truth table. What all I have? I have here control. I have the input A and I am having the output B. So control is my gate signal. So only when control signal is active that is it is 1 your input is transmitted out to the output right so we'll see that here what happens when control is one you're having two cases for control as one because the input is a a can take a can take two values zero or one am i right so what happens when control is one over here this nmos is on pmos is also on so what will happen if i give a value as zero a as zero here then through the nmos it will show in the output B. So B MOS will B will be output B will be zero. Similarly, if the control is one, both the gates are active. Control is one, control bar is zero. So both the transistors are on. And if I give the A value as one, then that one will appear through the PMOS as output at B. So that's what your truth table is about. Now imagine the other way around. You are making the gates inactive. So that means you are giving control value as 0 or you can say that uh, the, you can see that as C. Here it is control. So control you are assuming or assigning the value as 0. So control bar is 1. So anyway both the transistors are off. So no matter what value you give for the input. The input ca value can again change as 0 or 1. No matter what value you are giving it as input. Your output will be always not defined or you normally say that is a high impedance state so this is just the idea of working of a trans transmission gate okay so just like how we have seen for a pass transistor for transmission gate also we can write an expression or boolean expression for the output so in this case b is your output here so the idea to write the equation for b is or the output is nothing but like what we have seen for pass transistors it is nothing but input a multiplied by or a dot c or control here so boolean expression b equal to a dot control a dot control so one thing you have to remember is the output is always input multiplied by whatever terminal is there for the gate of n mouse input multiplied by whatever term you are having 
for the gate of the n mos you need not look into the gate of the p mos so your b equation is nothing but a dot control suppose instead of control you are having some x or y say x is the value so b is nothing but a dot x okay so here it is control of c so b is nothing but a dot control it, it is read as a and control gives you b so that is what you have to remember i believe this is what we have seen for past transistors also so same way you just have to write the equation so this you need not worry about what value you are giving uh, for the pmos here for writing the output expression so that is what the transmission i um, mean gate truth table is about so only when the control signal is active input is transmitted on to the output if the control signal is inactive then the output is in a normal high impedance state so there are different ways of drawing symbols for a transmission gate i'm sorry there are different ways of drawing symbols for a transmission gate i've drawn few so this is what we have seen and this way also you can represent a symbol for transmission gate so one thing you have to remember is that wherever you see a bubble that is basically the gate of your pmos so that side is your pmos so here if you can see here you can see a bubble over here so this is actually your pmos and the opposite side is your nmos so if we have a bubble over here this is your pmos and bottom you are having an nmos right and the left is your input right is your output so this way also in some in some textbook you can see transmission gate symbol drawn like this or this is the normally used symbol for transmission gate on on to the left hand side to uh, the transmission gate circuit this is what we have seen pmos and nmos now pmos and nmos can also be drawn like this that is an arrow pointing inwards is normally your pmos an arrow pointing outwards is normally your c uh, n mos so this way also you can draw the circuit representation of a transmission gate that is up to you whichever way comfortable you can draw the sorry you can draw the circuit okay so this these are the basic symbol of transmission gate so uh, we have just defined or we have just seen what transmission gate is and how does it work i mean uh, how you can explain the working of a transmission gate so next what we need to see is we have uh, i've told that transmission gate is also used to implement circuit just like pass transistors okay so how can that be done so in order to understand that logic it's actually very easy in the in our last class what we have seen is how to implement functions using a pass transistor right so if you remember that that steps very neatly that can be used to easily implement uh, logic functions using transmission gate so i'm just trying to refresh uh, we'll just uh, refresh it in one or two minutes uh, we have seen an and gate circuit the truth table of an and gate circuit and this is your pass transistor implementation of an and gate so there also for an and gate we have seen two a type of implementation if you remember where in which the gate signal you have given there are two literals right a and b and the output is y so to the gate you can either give a as a control signal or to the gate you can give b as a control signal so depending upon that you are having two types of circuit so that is what i've drawn here we have seen this All right so this is actually your pass transistor implementation of an and gate so how can you write the output y output y is nothing but b dot a plus you are having two gates here so it is b dot a plus this is grounded so zero dot a bar so output is nothing but b dot a or a dot b which is your and function this circuit the second circuit also functions as an and circuit how can we uh, come into the equation of y y is nothing but a dot b plus zero dot b bar which is y is nothing but your a dot b now hope you remember how to implement this circuit it's not a must that always you are when you have two literals a and b always you need to give a to the gate and other input is b it's not so you can always you can give b it's, it depends upon your wish how you are going to design so how you design that if you remember if i want to keep my gate signal as a my other input is actually my other input is actually b right so how how did i get here as b and how did i get here as zero so how that for that we have to look into the truth table am i right now so a a is in true form and also in a complement form two cases a is in a complement form that means a equal to a bar or a equal to zero 
in other two cases a is in a true form that is a equal to a or a uh, a equal to a or a equal to 1 so these two cases we have to look fixing a we have to look how the output varies with the other input that is a trick am i right if you remember how the output varies with the other input right so for a equal to 0 in both the cases no ma if you look here when b is 0, output is 0. When b is 1, output is 0. So, no matter what the input is, your output is always 0. So, thereby you get the first NMOS uh, circuit that is when A is in a A bar form. So, to the gate you are giving A as A bar. Then, no matter what the value of B is, output is also always is 0. So, what happens? you have to give a ground here because this zero will be transmitted on to the output. So, this is zero. Now, what happens to the true form? When A equal to 1, what is happening? How the output varies with the other input? That is, when B is zero, output is zero. When B is 1, your output is 1. So, that means what? Whatever is there in the other input is transmitted as it is to the output. Am I right? So, when A equal to 1 or when A is in its true form, when A is in A form, then whatever is B is transmitted on to the output. So, the other input is actually B itself. So, thereby you can write this as B dot A plus 0 dot A bar, which is nothing but B dot A or A dot B bar. So, that is uh, in, in a nutshell how to implement any gates using pass transistors. Now, if that is clear to you, implementation of any logic function using a transmission gate is also very easy. So, this is your AND gate. Same way, let's say we try to implement a logic function, uh, say 2 cross 1 multiplexer using transmission gate. Okay. So, for a 2 cross 1 multiplexer, you know the output equation. You are having two inputs, you are having one output and one select line. So, the output equation is say y equal to a s bar plus b into s where a and b are the input s is your select line so output a y equal to a s bar plus b s so your corresponding uh, uh, pass transistor implementation is this output y can be read as a s bar plus b into s so that is what your pass transistor implementation is now what we are interested in is how to implement the same circuit in transmission gate so, the idea is very, very simple. If you are thorough with, with implementation of an equation in pass transistors, then you can easily convert that circuit into transmission gate. Now, how to do that? Now, as I told you earlier itself, your transmission gate consists of an NMOS and PMOS in parallel. Am I right? So, what you do is, given any equation, first, it's very easy. Uh, what you can do is, you can first write or implement that equation in pass transistor. So, the equation what we got here is AS bar plus BS. So, that equation I have implemented using a pass transistor. Right. Now, this circuit to convert that into in terms of transmission gate, what you just need to do is for every NMOS, you just draw a parallel PMOS to it. Right. So, how many NMOS are here? There are two NMOS. So, you should draw two parallel PMOS. One PMOS to this NMOS and one PMOS to this NMOS. So, that is what you need to do. Now, if you remember the circuit diagram of uh, transmission gate, your input and output of the PMOS and NMOS are shorted together. So, here also the input is shorted here and the output is shorted here. For this PMOS that you are drawing here, input will be shorted here, output will be shorted here. So, what is left? What is left is your gate terminal. So, how to connect the gate terminal? So, one important point of gate terminal is say i am replacing this nmos with the uh, transmission gate that means i am having a nmos and a pmos here so for this nmos if my control signal to the gate is s bar then for the pmos that i draw here the gate signal will be s so this gate signals of the pmos and the nmos should be complement of each other so, if I have S bar here, the other gate signal of the PMOS which you are going to draw here will be S. Same way, uh, if I draw a PMOS here, here the gate signal of NMOS is S. So, the gate signal of PMOS will be S bar. So, that is how you can directly convert this circuit into a transmission gate circuit. So, that circuit is here. Let's see.
uh, whether we got it or not this is a symbol of your transmission gate so what we had is simply initially an nmos so a into s bar this part only we had now what i told you in order to convert this pass transistor into a transmission gate circuit you just have to add one more pmos over this and over this so this section what i had is i added one more pmos that is a bubble that you have here so how will you connect the terminals the input and the outputs are shorted that is there now what is left is a gate terminal now how to assign polarity to the gate terminal is to here to this nmos the polarity that i have given is s bar so the pmos which i am connecting parallel to that to that the gate polarity should be inversion of this so s bar inversion is s so here if you have s bar to the pmos it is s am i right so that is this circuit now for the other uh, the bottom one what i have is an uh, nmos here and for that nmos i am giving the control signal as s so that is what this one is and b is my input and i have to draw a parallel pmos to the same nmos so that i have drawn here so i put a bubble indicating it is a pmos and what is the control signal that i give to the gate of the pmos for the nmos the control signal is s so definitely for the pmos it should be complement of each other so what i have given here is s bar if it is s here so it is s bar so that is your final circuit using transmission gate so how you can write the output equation the output equation you can write as the same way how you have analyzed for pass transistors that is you need not worry about uh, writing the equation uh, regarding the pmos side so you just need to look on to the nmos side so the output equation y is nothing but a dot in the nmos side it is s bar so a dot s bar plus b dot s so your output y is a dot s bar plus b dot s which is nothing but equation of a 2 cross 1 multiplexer so that is your basic idea of implementing uh, logic functions using transmission gate you first easily draw the logic function use the passing using a pass transistor logic and replace that pass transistor or uh, replace that pass transistor with the transmission gate and what you have to remember is the gate signals should be gate signals of a nmos and pmos should be complement of each other so that way you can easily implement a uh, transmission gate circuit i believe it is clear so we'll see one more example example of an xor gate so xor gate here the function f is nothing but i've chosen a signal a to drive the gate of the uh, nmos circuit so f is nothing but b dot a bar plus b bar dot a or a bar dot b plus a b bar which is equation of an xor gate now how to convert that into corresponding transmission gate circuit you just replace this nmos with the transmission gate or uh, how you how you can replace an nmos with the transmission gate by drawing a parallel pmos with the nmos so you can short the input and output and for the gate signal what is the idea you have to invert the whatever uh, gate value you have given for nmos that value you have to complement then give us gate value to the pmos so if you see here this is a corresponding transmission gate implementation of a xor gate so what happens here for a b this is b dot a bar so that b dot a bar is here so this was your initial uh, nmos now in order to convert that into transmission gate to this nmos which is over here i parallelly added a pmos so if this is a bar here then this should be a so complement of each other so this is a similarly for the second circuit this is a b bar am i right b bar a this is coming from here this line is coming from here so this gate is actually a so this is a b bar and a b bar plus a bar b so the output is that of your xor gate so i believe that is clear if that is clear you can easily implement any given logic function using transmission gates okay so we'll just sum up or we'll just try to define transmission gate once again with all the points that we have seen so a transmission gate or a cmos transmission gate consists of one nmos and one pmos and that are connected in parallel like what we have seen right then the gate one more point we have seen is the gate voltage is applied to these two transistors these two transistors mean the nmos and pmos which are connected in parallel are also said to be complementary signal that is what we have seen that is if a is input of 
uh, either NMOS or PMOS. Say if A is the input for a PMOS gate, then A bar should be the input for the NMOS gate. So the gate voltages applied to these two transistors are also said to be complementary signals. Then uh, CMOS transmission gate, it actually is a switch. So it operates as a bidirectional switch between the nodes A and B. A is your input, B is output and which is controlled by the control signal C. C is the signal that you are giving to the gate, C and C bar. So CMOS transmission gate operates as a bidirectional switch between the nodes A and B which is controlled by the signal C. So uh, just the working, that is if signal C is high, then both the transistors are on, then both the transistors are turned on and provide a low resistance current path between the nodes A input and the output, nodes A and B. If signal C is low, then both the transistors will be off and the path between nodes A and B, that is the input and the output, will be an open circuit. So this condition is also called as a high impedance. This is with reference to this diagram. That is, we are having an A and B, A as input, B as output, C or control as a gate signal. So as far as C value is 1, both the transistors are on. So A is passed on to the output. When C value or the control value is 0, both the transistors are off. So there is no connection between the input and output. So our output is normally in a high impedance state. So that is how you can conveniently uh, explain or conveniently represent what a transmission gate is about. Okay, so we have just seen how to implement circuits using transmission gate also. We will see one more circuit. Uh, say I give an equation, implement F is equal to AB plus A bar C bar plus AB bar C using transmission gate. Okay, so in order to implement that, I just go one step further. I uh, If I see here, uh, it is A, B plus A bar, C bar plus A, B bar, C bar. So for the first and this last term, A is common. So I just rearrange this and write as A bar. It is nothing but A bar, C bar. The second term I'm writing, I'm writing it as the first one. So A bar, C bar plus A into B plus B bar, C. So this is your equation. So I'm going to implement this equation using a transmission gate. So how many transmission gate do I basically require? I require a transmission gate to implement A bar, C bar. And very clearly, I require a transmission gate to implement B bar C. Then I have to do something with this B term. And then I have to do something for multiplication. So how can I implement? Right away, we'll come into the solution. So this is your circuit for this equation. Right. Now, how did this one come up with? First is A bar C bar. Let's look into A bar C bar. So you can implement this using a transmission gate. So C bar can be the input. A bar can be input to the uh, gate of a NMOS, right? So that is what is written here. I have uh, drawn a transmission gate here. So here is a bubble. So this is your uh, PMOS and this will be your NMOS. So normally, if you remember how you write the equation is whatever value is coming on to the gate of the NMOS multiplied by the input, right? So what you require is A bar, C bar. So input I've chosen as C bar. That is your wish. If you want to choose here as A bar, then this will be C bar. So uh, here it is input I've chosen it as C bar and the gate I've chosen it as A bar. So the output is nothing but C bar A bar or A bar C bar plus then what are the terms? I have A into B bar, sorry, A into B plus B bar C. So what is it? If you look here, this is C multiplied by B bar. So this is C B bar or B bar C, this term plus B. So this is B is nothing but B dot 1. Am I right? So that they have implemented it something like this. That is B multiplied by VDD. VDD is 1, right? So 1 dot B bar. So what is this one? This point is actually C dot B bar plus 1 dot B or C dot B bar plus B multiplied by A. So this entire three transmission gate is for this expression. A into, that is A into C B bar plus B. Okay, so your final equation is C bar A bar plus A into C B bar plus B. So that is how you implement any, any equation using your basic transmission gate. I hope it is clear. And one more last thing is 
uh, you have a universal logic circuit or logic module to input universal logic module using transmission gate so that means uh, given any function you you this circuit basically implements all the and or nor nand xor and x nor function to input functions using transmission gate okay now if you look here we'll just analyze this is one transmission gate and this is another transmission gate so i have used two transmission gates and if you look here for this transmission gate here you have the bubble so this is your pmos gate so this is your nmos gate similarly for this transmission gate here i am having a bubble so this is my pmos gate and this is my nmos gate the gate terminals are identified then this and this will be the input and the output so this is the input for this transmission gate and this is the output for this transmission gate this is the input for the second transmission gate and this is the output so output both are shorted together okay now i have written the output function as function a comma b any any value or any function between a and b okay and uh, the input to the first transmission gate is f of 0 comma b so which is with respect to this truth table and input to the second transmission gate is f of 1 comma b that is with respect to this transmission and this truth table okay now if i connect transmission gates like this okay so that means for the first transmission gate uh, the gate value for c uh, n mos is a bar right you are giving here a bar and for the second transmission gate the gate value is a now if i connect a circuit like this this circuit can be implemented for getting any of these functions provided you give the value of inputs as given in the truth table now let's see how this works so let's say you talk about a dot b which is your and function okay so when it is an and function what happens is f of 0 comma b that is this input should take the value that is provided here right so f of 0 comma b that is the first function this value will be zero assume uh this is zero over here now what about the other input it is actually given here as b so here you should give a b so this is zero and this is b now let's see what output you are getting over here right so this is what is this function zero multiplied by a bar plus b multiplied by a right so this f of a comma b is 0 multiplied by a bar plus here it is b b multiplied by a which is nothing but a dot b which is nothing but an function so similarly depending upon what value you give for the both the inputs according to this table you will get this function say let's say we try to explain for nand gate okay so for nand gate f of 0 dot b is 1 all right 0 comma b this function value you should give it as 1 and the second function value here you should give us b bar so let's see what the function is f of a comma b is nothing but 1 dot a bar plus here what should what should you give here it is b bar right so b bar dot a so this is what 1 dot a bar plus b bar dot a or a bar plus ab sorry a bar plus ab bar right this is 1 dot a bar and this is b bar dot a so a bar plus a b bar so a bar plus a b bar can be written as like what we have seen for fast transistors a bar plus a b bar you can simplify that using an identity it is nothing but a bar plus a multiplied by a bar plus b bar so a bar plus a is nothing but 1 so what you get is finally a bar plus b bar so a bar plus b bar by using de morgan's law it is nothing but a dot b the whole bar so what you get is your nand function so similarly you can work out the remaining things and see whether you are getting according to this particular truth table so this is in general how you can implement a two two input universal logic module using two transmission gates okay so with that i believe we can complete the analysis of or we can complete the study of 
implementation of basic uh, implementation of logic functions using transmission gates okay so uh, just a small comparison so far we have seen pass transistors we have seen complementary pass transistor logic and we have seen transmission gate logic so if i just compare between pass uh, pass transistor logic and transmission gate logic what are all the main points that you have to see first major main point is uh, we know that pass transistors cannot effectively pass 1 and 0 for nmos and pmos respectively so that is a major disadvantage but since transmission gate has both nmos and pmos in parallel there is no issue like that here so it can pass 1 and 0 effectively so that is a major important or most important point or most important advantage compared to ptl for a transmission gate so that is the first comparison another comparison that you can do is if you look into the circuit earlier what we have seen say for an xor gate or for an an gate uh, what we have seen is uh, the number of gates required to implement any function in a pass transistor logic is obviously less but for transmission gate it is more say for example we have seen the an gate or an xor gate for a two input xor gate in pass transistor uh, logic we just require two nmos whereas if i just convert that into a transmission gate you require two nmos and two pmos so the number of gates is more for transmission gate less for pass transistor logic but that is uh, you can consider uh, that is not much of a greater advantage advantage given that even though the number of uh, transistors is less ptl fails in the point where it cannot efficiently pass 1 or 0 so that is not a big advantage to point out as it is but it is just for comparison the number of gates required to implement any logic function using ptl is uh, actually less okay so this is in short how you compare your pass transistor logic and transmission we have seen uh and we have defined what a transmission gate is and we also have seen how to implement basic circuits using transmission gate logic okay so thereby we move upon the last part of transmission gate that is uh, uh, you call that is a dc analysis of a cmos transmission gate or we are just trying to find out an equation for or we are just trying to find out what is a total resistance of a transmission gate and why do we actually do that the basic idea of that is like initially when i told you just like pass transistors your transmission gate also can be used as a switch uh, so how efficient of a switch is actually a transmission gate that can be understood from the concept of understanding the resistance of a transmission gate so normally if you look for any switch uh, what can you say about the resistance of a switch uh, that is irrespective of what is the value of the input or what is the value of the output your resistance of your switch should always remain constant right it should not depend upon the input or the output it should always remain constant so that is an ideal switch so whether your cmos transmission gate behaves as an ideal switch that is a point of thinking or point of analysis so that is what we are going to do now that can be only done by looking on to the dc analysis or book by looking on to each transistors and what are regions that it works so that is what we are going to see by dc analysis of a cmos transmission gate okay so while doing that what we do is we'll just analyze cmos separately p sorry we'll just analyze nmos separately cmos separately we are going to analyze it in terms of the regions of working okay so this slide will come into that uh, finally when we discuss so when we talk about the analysis first we talk about is the nmos and the pmos scatter now we know that we have studied while uh, looking on to cmos inverter whether it is nmos or whether it is pmos there is basically three there are three regions of working for nmos and pmos it is either in cutoff or it is in triode or ohmic or linear region which is shown by here here the slow rise so it is either in triode region or it is in saturation region so, so three regions of working cut off triode and saturation and i believe you know what all these regions are how how does it happen uh, you know the saturation region the current actually saturates the wave is actually flat triode region there is a linear increase with respect to the 
increase in voltage the current there is a linear increase so that is why it is called as a linear region ohmic region or a triode region and the transistors are off you call that as in a it is in a cut off region right so that you have to remember in order to analyze this one these three regions you have to remember or more clearly what you need to remember is the equations governing uh, the entry into these three regions say for nmos when my vds is less than vgs minus vt you call that your nmos has gone into a linear region and for pmos when vds is much much greater than vgs minus vt you call that it has gone into a saturation region so these two equations for nmos you have to keep in mind so similarly you can write the equation for pmos as so for pmos for nmos nmos if this is vds then pmos it will be vsd okay so for pmos when vsd is greater or much much greater than vsd minus mod of vt you remember for pmos the threshold voltage is a negative value so here it is mod of vt then the whole circuit or the pmos goes into saturation and when your vsd is less than vsd minus mod of vt then your pmos goes into linear region okay so these equations you have to remember to analyze the working dc analysis of transmission gate so we'll start our analysis so what i've done is uh, i've drawn the transmission gate circuit over here so you have to remember the case which we are going to analyze the case is where both the transistors are on and both the transistors are off it is obviously in the cut off region there is no connection between the input and the output so there is no point to analyze right so we are going to see when both the transistors are on transistors are on means to the nmos you are giving g value as vdd or logic high for the pmos your gate value is zero okay so both the pmos is on nmos is on and also the input that i am providing is initially input was zero and i am providing a vdd so the output that we expect to get is vdd right so that is a condition so this is the source of pmos drain of pmos drain of nmos and source of nmos so this is how it is connected so we'll start with analyzing the nmos first so what are all the regions of working under this input condition this does the nmos go through so in order for us not to forget i've also copied the linear and the saturation region equation so first what we do is what all terms are here there are three terms which is vt vgs vds am i right so vt we can choose it as a standard value that is around 0.7 volt now what is vgs what is vds we need to write an equation for both vgs and vds depending upon this particular circuit so let's write that so for nmos so for nmos we'll write an equation for vds and vgs so what is vds vds is nothing but vd minus vs so this is your nmos so vds is vd minus vs so vd is what vdd vd is the input that you are giving for drain side so that is nothing but vdd vs is the output side so i write that as conveniently v out so vds is nothing but vd minus vs which is vdd minus v out same way vgs vgs is nothing but vg minus vs which is vdd minus v out vg here is vdd vs is v out so vgs uh, is also vd minus v out okay so both vds and vgs equation are the same so we have written an equation for vds and vgs then what so we also know that the nmos is on for vgs greater than vth right for any gate gate to source voltage greater than your threshold voltage your nmos is on so uh, you concentrate on this equation vgs is greater than vth so what i do to this equation i just substitute the equation of vgs from here so what is my vgs it is vdd minus v out is greater than vth if this is the condition then your nmos is on so let's try to rearrange this equation in terms of something on left hand side as v out so i take the term this side and i remove i try to remove the negative sign so if i rearrange it and write i can say that my v out when it is less than vdd minus vth i bring it over here and change the sign so this symbol is changed and this one is also changed 
So you can write this equation in C. So if you rearrange in terms of V out, I can say V out when it is less than VDD minus VTH, your NMOS is on. You have written the condition for NMOS to be on, right? So when V out is less than VDD minus VTH, your NMOS is on. So when is NMOS off? Obviously, if you reverse this equation, that is when V out is NMOS is off for V out is greater than VDD minus VTH, right? From this, what you got as when V out is less than VDD minus VTH, your NMOS is on. So obviously, when V out is sorry, when V out is less than VDD minus VTH, NMOS is on, and when a V out is greater than VDD minus VTH, your NMOS is off. So that we have got. Okay. So when MOS is off, that is no point. You can say clearly it is in the cutoff region. Now when uh, NMOS is on. There are two possibilities for this. When the transistor is on, it can either be in a linear region or it can go into a saturation region. So when this is on here, what region is it actually working on? That also we need to find out. Am I right? So for that, we take help of these two equations. So it is either lean for this equation it is linear, for this one it is saturation. Am I right? So if you look here. When VDS is less than VGS minus VT, it is in linear condition, otherwise it is in saturation condition. So according to our case, we'll see which of these two equations are true for us. Am I right? Whether VDS is less than VGS minus VT or whether VDS is greater than VGS minus VT. If any one of these conditions is true, that is a region where your NMOS is actually working on. So we look onto the equation of VDS and VGS. If you look here, both the equations are same. Am I right? So VDS is equal to VGS. Right. So on basis of that, can you tell me which equation is true over here? Say for simplicity's sake, assume your VDD is 5 volt. Okay. And assume your V out has uh, come into some zero or uh, let's say V out is initial. Uh, you are taking a condition where V out is equal to 5, 1 volt. So this is 5 minus 1, which is 4 volt. So assume your VDS is equal to 4 volt, which is the same as VGS as per this equation. Both are 4 volt. Now, which equation is true over here? So 4 volt is 4 volt less than 4 volt minus what is VT? VT assume it as a standard value 0.7. So is that true or this one true? 4 volt less than 4 minus 0.7, that is 3.3. Is this true? This is not true, right? This is true. 4 volt is greater than 4 minus 0.7. So 4 volt is greater than 3.3 volt. So this equation becomes true. So that means your NMOS, when it is on, it is actually in a saturation region. So NMOS is on, so it is in saturation region. So that is what you get. For this set of inputs, uh, for a value, VDD, uh, sorry, V out less than VDD minus VTH, NMOS is on and it is in saturation. For a value V out greater than VDD minus VTH, your NMOS is off. So that is what we have concluded. So those are the two regions of working for a NMOS over here. Now I try to plot that as a graph here. So towards X axis, what I get is VO or your V out. Okay, so I've marked two, three points over here. This is a mod of VTP. This is mainly for analysis of PMOS. And the one which relates to NMOS is VDD minus VTH. That is what we have seen here. VDD minus VTH and towards the VDD. The maximum output value that you can have is towards the VDD. Am I right? So what we have seen is NMOS is off for, this is your output V out. For V out, greater than VDD minus VTH. So this is your VDD minus VTH. So if V out goes beyond VDD minus VTH, your NMOS is off. Right. So when it is less than VDD minus VTH, NMOS is actually on and also it is in saturation. So NMOS is in saturation over here. I believe it is clear. So for a voltage value V out greater than VDD minus VTH, your NMOS is off. Less than VDD minus VTH, the NMOS is on. On means it is in saturation region that we have concluded from the equations over here. So that is the analysis of NMOS. So NMOS actually goes through saturation and cutoff. That's what here is. Right. Same way you can analyze for PMOS. So the same circuit, 
and uh, the so equation for saturation and linear is being copied out here and let's say we same way we are trying to analyze the pmos so for pmos here you have which all terms you have vsd vsd so you have to write the equation for vsd and vsg so vsd is nothing but vs minus vd am i right so here it is vs and this is vd so here input is vdd and vd here is v out for a pmos so vsd is nothing but vdd minus v out so that equation we have write, written here and now what is vsg vsg is nothing but vs minus vg now remember pmos is on that means gate terminal you are giving it as a zero volt right so this is vs minus vg that means vdd minus zero which is vdd itself so we got the equation for vsd and vsg now one thing you have to note here is i'm making your gate terminal as zero am i right so your vgs like what you say for nmos vgs vgs means vg minus vs which is zero minus vdd which is minus vdd so you are having a negative voltage at the gate for gate to source voltage for the pmos so this pmos is always on or more clearly you are applying a zero volt to the gate so this transmit uh, transistor pmos transistor is always in a on state so for the analysis for this this set of input conditions our pmos is always on it is not going into cutoff that is the first thing what you have to remember so pmos is always on so that means it is either in the saturation region or in the linear region so it is not going to cut off as per our equation so we need to find out which region of working does it does it fall on whether it is in the saturation region or whether it is in the linear region for that we take help of these two equations right so according to our equation when vsd is less than vsd minus it is in a linear region other way around it is in a saturation region so we take the equation first and then we substitute for vsd and vsd from these two equations here so what i get here vsd is nothing but vdd minus v out is less than vsd is vdd vdd minus vth then this is in linear region so i can rearrange i have vdd common here so i can cancel that out and i can remove the negative sign so when i rearrange what i get is when v out is greater than vth or vt the threshold voltage the circuit or the pmos goes into a linear region so obviously when v out is great if v out is greater than vth if it is linear then uh, when v out is less than vt it should be in saturation that you will get it by directly substituting in the first equation so we got the expression for which case it is linear and which case it is saturation so thereby we'll come into that diagram again on top what we have written is for nmos which we have seen earlier so P pmos pmos is always on so what happens pmos is a linear region where v out is greater than vt so the benchmark what i put here is vt 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 or vt ping so for a v out greater than vt so these three this is the point where v out is greater than vt so for that entire region your pmos is in linear region of operation and when v out is less than vt it is in saturation so that is what is shown here okay so this completes analysis for if i give the input as vdd and make both the gates active right so your nmos and pmos actually goes through these three regions of working so with that in mind what we can do same way here the analysis what we have done is for input is vdd okay now same analysis can be done for the input as this is for input as vdd this is the analysis that we have done just now same way using all those equations you can analyze for input to be zero volt okay so in that case you will get your regions of operation like this that is left to you as exercise we don't have much time to analyze that so please go through that and see whether you're getting this one just like how we have analyzed for this one you can do the analysis for this one or this also so let's concentrate on what we have derived so this is what we got that is our condition is we are making both the gates active and we are giving the providing the input as vdd so if that is the case these are the regions or so this is how 
your uh, depending upon the output voltage the regions of working of nmos and pmos nmos is saturation saturation cut off pmos is saturation and then after that after vtp it goes into a linear state okay now why we have learned all these things we have learned all these things basically in order to get an idea about the current equation right if you remember when we studied the cmos inverter equation current equation which is uh, mu and c o 1 by 2 mu and c o x w by l into v d s minus v g s minus v t the whole square that equation if you remember for saturation you are having a different current equation for cutoff region obviously you have a different equation for uh, linear region you have different current equation so for each region of operation you are having a different different current equation now why do we require that current equation remember we have done all this analysis to find out the total resistance of a cmos transmission gate am i right so before we look into this equation we'll just come into this transmission gate so we are trying to find out the total resistance of this particular transmission gate so what is actually resistance resistance is nothing but voltage by current okay so that current uh, voltage by current that current varies depending upon the different regions of working of the transistor so that is the reason why we differentiated that into different regions so the total current of the transmission gate is nothing but the current through the pmos plus current through the nmos so that is what is written here id is id uh, of the nmos plus id of the PMOS, right so the equivalent resistance is nothing but voltage by the current okay so if i talk about the nmos here r equivalent resistance or the resistance of nmos is nothing but the voltage by the current so voltage means vdd minus v out input minus output right vdd minus v out by id right that is a resistance of an nmos same way resistance of pmos is vdd minus v out by the current through the pmos id sp so the total resistance is these two uh, transistors are in parallel so obviously the resistance is parallel r n parallel to r p so that is your final resistance of the circuit now why we are looking on to this is because we are just trying to prove that whatever be the value of input and output your uh, total resistance of this circuit remains always constant if that is the case then we can say this transmission gate works as an ideal switch so all the pain we have gone through in analyzing this and this is to find out the resistance okay that final total resistance so that resistance can be got by resistance is nothing but voltage by current and that current equation varies depending upon each region of working right so that is the main aim of uh, going through all this uh, path so um, we have a total current equation here and the resistance equation here so based on that say for different regions say region 1 region 2 region 3 so region 1 nmos is in saturation pmos is also in saturation so what is the resistance of the n n uh, mos transistor it is nothing but vdd minus v out by ids am i id id current right so id current of n n is in saturation so you write the current equation for n here same way pmos is also in saturation so the resistance is this voltage divided by the current equation the current equation is 1 by 2 mu and c mox or kp so that 1 by 2 that 2 will go upwards so these are the corresponding resistance equations now you don't need not worry about looking onto this big equation because this equation you have already derived what you just need to do is substitute the value of id for saturation id for cutoff id for i mean id for saturation and id for linear for cutoff there is no id right so that you if you just simply substitute you will get these equations okay so these equations are there uh, this is left you to just read what is uh, this equation now uh, we are worried about the total final resistance so for each region the total resistance is a parallel value of this and this for region 2 it is a parallel value of this and this for region 3 it is a parallel value of this and this okay so what i do is i just try to plot the resistance that we got from these equations so your plot of the resistance final resistance looks something like this okay so what you see on the i mean uh, as a red line is basically the resistance of the pmos 
what you see in the black line is actually the resistance of your NMOS. And what you see the green line is actually the parallel combination or the effective resistance of a transmission gate. Okay, so as you can see from the equation, if I try to plot, the resistance of a PMOS is actually decreasing and the resistance of NMOS is actually increasing. So, when I talk about the parallel combination R equivalent of N to R equivalent of P, we can say that your resistance, uh, total equivalent resistance is actually remaining constant. Right. So, that is a good sign. That is what we want. Right. I told you initially itself for it to behave as a proper gate, sorry, proper switch, the output, uh, the equivalent resistance of the circuit should be constant. It should not depend upon or should not vary with the input and the output. So, that is what you get for a transmission here. So, thereby, what we can say is con conveniently or we can say very surely that this transmission gate can act as an ideal switch since the resistance, equivalent resistance of the transmission gate basically remains constant, almost constant throughout. Okay, it doesn't vary with respect to the input and the output. So, when we conclude that point, your DC analysis of transmission gate is over. So what we have seen is the effective resistance is basically constant throughout. Therefore, it is more ideal switch compared to a pass transistor logic. That is, the resistance is basically not varying depending upon the input and the output voltages. So you can call this as a ideal switch. So that concludes your analysis, DC analysis part of your transmission gate. Thereby, with that, actually your module 4 of VLSA is also over. The analysis of transmission gate is also over. That means so far what we have seen in module 4 is, uh, according to your syllabus, it is pass transistor logic, C, a complementary pass transistor logic, transmission gate and realization of logic function. So these are what you have in your fourth module. It is actually a very small module and a very easy one compared to all other modules. So in pass transistors, what we have seen is how to implement the logic function. The characteristics of fast transistors as in the advantages, disadvantages and also the cascading, how you can connect the fast transistor. That point we have seen in the first part, that is part one of VLSA module 4. And also you've seen the complementary fast transistor logic. Where there you've just seen the how to implement the logic function, right? No more other point in that. And today in this class, what we have discussed is the transmission gate how to implement logic functions using transmission gate and finally the DC analysis or the equivalent resistance analysis. So as such, this sums up what all you have, you have to study in your fourth module that we have concluded or sorry, that we have completed in two classes. And uh, just like what we have seen in the last uh, session uh, from the university question papers, I've just copied the questions related to transmission gate. So one question is you have to differentiate the pass transistor CPTL that is complementary pass transistor logic and transmission gate. You just have to compare these three and they've got five marks. They've given five marks for that. And next question is what is a transmission gate? Draw XOR gate using transmission gate. That is a direct easy question. For that it is, you are having a five mark. And the question is explain the demerits of pass transistors, how it can be remedied. remedied. So what is the major demerit of pass transistors? That is, it cannot pass a good one or good zero. So that you have to explain how it is not passing a good one or good zero. And the way which you can remedy that is using a transmission gate. So you have to define pass, uh, what is a transmission gate, how it passes a good zero or good one. So that is, uh, they've given seven marks for that question. If you answer, you get seven marks. And another question is implement the following functions using pass transistors and transmission gates. So it is A or B, A X or X nor B. Both are two input functions and very easy to implement. And they've given eight marks for that. So you can easily score eight marks in that also. So these are the some, some questions related to uh, transmission gate that we have seen in the university question papers. Okay. So for this uh, topic that is transmission gate is neatly explained in your reference textbook SM Kang. Digital Integrated Circuits Analysis and Design by SMCAN. That is a good read book. And also for preparing the PPT, I have referred an NPTEL lecture and the link is available as given here. So I believe uh, the concepts are clear. I've done justice to uh, module four and um, hope you can study this easily.
and it's over to you my session is over for today hello thank you ma'am thank you for the valuable session uh, ma'am okay. we have few questions okay uh, one of the question is when yeah. both transistors are on in transmission gates yes. how can we ensure that zero will pass through n mos and one will pass through p mos yes uh, that is a valid question so if you look into the circuit diagram of a transmission gate okay you can uh, take here this is a circuit diagram of a transmission gate so what happens is you are making both the gate active so n mos and p mos is one okay so suppose you are giving an input as vdd vdd or logic high so sorry uh you are giving the you are giving the input as logic high okay now we know that you are you have a cmos i mean n mos here n mos will switch off as soon as this output capacitor charges up to vdd minus vth right so by switching this off or when it switches off that means this gives a high resistance path so there is no way this all uh, vdd entire vdd can pass through n mos to the output but what happens to the p mos p mos is always on am i right so it doesn't depend upon this value of vdd so what happens is the entire vdd can go through p mos to the output capacitance and it can charge up to this provides a low resistance path to charge up to vdd so that way we can ensure you are getting entire vdd or logic 1 through p mos now when i have a logic 0 over here what happens is this output uh, capacitor discharges to zero right so what happens here is your p mos once the voltage becomes lower than the threshold voltage your p mos will be switched off so switched off means this offers a high resistance path but always in this case depending upon the vgs and vds equation your n mos will be always on if i give a zero over here so when it is always on there is a discharge path this capacitor can entirely discharge through this path to zero so you will get a perfect zero here so this is the path for zero and this is the path for one so thereby you can ensure you are getting a uh, proper one and proper zero i believe it is clear uh, ma'am we have another question uh, yes. it's a request to explain transmission grade uh truth table once more transmission gate truth table truth table yeah so this is a trans uh, this is a transmission gate truth table so here i'm having an input as a output as b your uh, where you have a bubble here so this is my p mos to p mos i'm giving control bar and for n mos i'm giving control okay so for this transmission gate to be working or active i should activate both the n mos and p mos i should make on the n mos and p mos so to do that what i should give is to the n mos gate i should give the control value as 1 and the control bar as 0 right so this is on when my control value is 1 all right so control is 1 means n mos is on so control bar becomes 0 so p mos is also on so when control is 1 what you give as input is reached as out Yeah, so that is what is written in the truth table here. So when control is one, the input if it is zero, that you get as output zero, just like how I have explained earlier. And when being the control one, if I give one as input, that one is obtained as output through the P MOS. Okay. okay. Now what will happen when your control value is zero? Control value is zero means to the gate of the N MOS you are giving a zero, and uh, to the gate of a P MOS you are giving a one. So both the transistors are on, so there is no connection between the input and the output. So no matter what you give as input, whether zero or one, your output will always remain in a high impedance state. So that is what your truth table of transmission gate is. I hope that explains it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, we have another question. Are we considering only yes. n mos while summing in the transmission gate? yes we are considering only n mos while summing in the transmission gate so just like what we have considered for past transistors so here itself we can write the boolean expression b as a dot what value you are given as a gate signal to the n mos
a dot a and control a and control that is how you should consider or uh, say if this equation itself how we can write this equation is nothing but this is your nmos part so c bar dot a bar plus c dot these these are the nmos part top you are having the pmos part so you just need to look onto the nmos part so c bar dot a bar plus c dot b bar plus 1 dot b multiplied by a so we have to always look into the nmos part no need to no need to look onto the pmos part uh, uh, you you may get confused i hope it is clear that one that point is clear any more questions yes, ma'am ma one more question we have to summarize the function implementation once again and the implementation of Fun logic gates. function okay uh, implementation of logic gates uh, what you can do the step i believe you are asking for the step so yes, what you have to do is uh, basically uh, once you are thorough with implementing the logic function using pass transistors you can impl easily implement it using a transmission gate so what you have to do is this is an xor function so uh, xor function the truth uh, circuit diagram using pass transistors you draw it now what you do is wherever you are having an nmos you replace that part with the corresponding transmission gate by transmission gate what i have is an nmos and pmos in parallel so i already have an nmos here so in order to replace this by a transmission gate means i have to include a pmos in parallel right so the connection there is no confusion for a transmission gate the input and the outputs are shorted with that of the nmos now what remains is what signal do we apply to the gate of the pmos that we had here so from the explanation of the derivation we've seen that the gates are always complement with each other so if i add a, for this um, uh, nmos i've replaced that with the transmission gate so uh, what value should i give it to the gate of the pmos am i right so whatever value you've given to the gate of the nmos the complement should be given to the gate of the pmos so here for the gate of the nmos i've given a bar am i right this is a nmos here so for that i've given a bar so for that pmos which i draw parallel to the nmos for that gate i have given the i should give the complement of a bar which is nothing but a so the basic idea to sum up is replace your nmos with the transmission gate and uh, short the input and the output now the gate value should be connected in uh, given in such a way that uh, the gate for nmos is complement for the uh, is should be complement of gate for the pmos i believe it is clear yes ma'am uh, thank you yes. for the session ma'am uh, it was an enlightening session uh, we are now over with the q and a session okay thank you and all the best One, for your exams thank you ma'am okay thank you.